Hello, I'm Penelope Maver and welcome back to the Earth Converse podcast, where we explore our relationship and conversations with the earth, all in the hope of inspiring a deeper connection with ourselves, each other, and the earth that is our home. And I'm so excited. I've got <laughs> Miriam Wagner here. And I've, we have just um, recently met through the lovely Suzanne, who I interviewed on 31, and she just interviewed me. Yeah. But she was doing the translation of Miriam's new book, Yin for Life. <laughs> so here we'll talk is. about this, this incredible journey to get this book, and then the onward journey. And um, so I was at Suzanne's house, and Miriam came along, and I just, uh, you know, I'd heard a little bit about it because of Suzanne, and she actually just lives down the road in the establishments. And um, and when I met her, like my heart, it just sort of like a leap. And I just was like, oh, can you please come on the podcast? <laughs> she gave me her book, her signed book. And um, it was really funny because that weekend I went off to a girls weekend in the sea. And I took it with me and I um, actually hurt myself running into the sea. And um, so the rest of the weekend, I had to have my, my sort of foot up and I was on this beautiful terrace and I was just, it was just like the perfect time to just, mm -hmm. because of that yin, that welcoming, accepting, being still and just letting, you know, just letting that, all that goodness in. So we're going to explore a little bit of this book. Um, and there's elements in there that I just was just so... I just was like, oh my goodness, you know, female archetypes. And Miriam um, talks about her own journey about getting into her body and her senses and tapping into that wild child and wild woman that's always <laughs> there. So Miriam, hello, welcome. Thank you. Hello, fellow. <laughs> I'm really, really honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's just it's an lovely. honor, it's a pleasure. And when Miriam said, um, I mean, I said about the podcast, she said, oh, but that, you know, like it's hard, really hard. I can, sometimes I can't understand. And, you know, that New Zealand accent. So she's been tuning her ear for my uh, for my accent. And today she was in the, um, you're on the bit on Porta Show, was it? Yeah. On the beach. And she was listening to Bill Plotkin, that my interview with Bill Plotkin. And uh, it really resonated. Yeah. It absolutely did. I have to say as I, I was introduced to you and to Bill Plotkin by Susanne, mm -hmm. our dear friend. And so um, before I have to admit, I had no I, I was one of those who had no idea who he was, which has now drastically changed after your beautiful interview. And it also has changed, um, you know, my knowledge about you because we really have so recently met. So I listened first of all, I listened to the interview that Su Susanne did with you. So I got to know more about you as our meeting was so spontaneous, immediate connection. But I really wanted to know more about you and then also about your work by listening to uh, this interview is with Bill uh, Plotkin and it really resonated with me because I could hear um, a really different work that is and are that we do that he does of course with all this experience in many many years and what I have been writing about so there are quite a few uh, connections there that um, lifted my heart. Oh lovely what sort of yeah what were they was there what was that? He is talking about when he explains what is guiding back to your soul, right? This journey to your own soul. And he's talking about remembering what our place in this world is and our functions as everything else that is nature. And we are nature. We are part of nature. And I'm talking about this too with all the different sections and I'm uh, tapping in in my book, starting with the anatomy where every single cell knows inherently its place and its function and how to cooperate with the cells around it. 
And if a cell does not know its place and functions and loses this connection and just goes off doing its own thing, it literally becomes a cancer. And when I understood this the first time, when I was deeply immersed in anatomy and spirituality, both, mm. I, I realized how this applies to human beings. Mm. So when we lose the connection to what our place is, what our qualities are that, that each one of us has, has received really different qualities and talents, and when we do not show up with them, then we kind of become very destructive, not only to ourselves, but also to our environment. Mm. And this was something that I really loved hearing by the way that Bill Plotkin was explaining it in another way. Yeah, beautiful. And I love from that, from that atom to the bigger, the bigger purpose and the, and even, you know, it's like how it's a mirror. Yes. Mirror for that. And also like in terms of, and it's hard. I mean, an atom's pretty good at finding our way. It's, it's, it's pretty more difficult for a human, is it? Yeah. Yeah, we have our mind <laughs> that, that, that is genius, yeah. but it can also mess it quite up and it can guide us, mislead us, no? mm -hmm. make us believe that this is the truth and, and uh, this is our path and this is the right thing to do. Yeah. And that journey, I suppose, in terms of you know, for your own and for our, ourselves, that we go into that intellectual part. I mean, that's, you know, to, to make the most of that, our, our knowledge, our experience, but that returning to our bodies to really connect yeah. with that is the, we have to do that to find our purpose, don't we? It has yes. to be a, we can't think into our purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. I think where the yin aspects kick in or where I see the importance of the yin aspects because the yin aspects when we compare it to yang and we take it in, in this dynamic that you have just described then it is the yin aspects that are inviting us to stop doing and planning and striving forward and thinking that we know best but to really pause and to soften and then there eventually feel, feel our body, hear our soul, hear the birds, but really getting back to our true nature that is connected to nature, to yeah. the earth, yeah. to the wind, right? To yeah. death, life and death. And when we keep running and doing, which is also uh, important, this yang mm. aspect, but it's very dominant in our lives. So we, we miss out a lot when we forget to bring in also the other polarity, the yin. Mm. Mm. I'm tempted to, now I'm just tempted in terms of your own journey from that yin and yang. I know, but I, I suppose we haven't, um, you said about the different points with Bill Plotkin, but will, will we come back to that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm really curious, you know, because I think it is, there's something about you for when I was reading your story, because it was beautifully revealing about your, your own journey to come yeah. back into the yin. And yeah. without any spoilers, you know, because <laughs> <yeah, laughs> that's part of the book, I think, in terms of, you know, your story. Awesome. So, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't want to um, give anything away, but what would you like to share around that journey from, yeah. I feel that one of the important things to share also for those who read the book or are curious about the book is um, first of all, it was never my vision or dream to write a book. Mm. And, and it's uh, obviously even it's the first introduction no, into the book that I, I am telling you how the book uh, was created. But just to leave it at that, that um, this book is really the proof that when we cooperate with others, those that we trust or those that pop up in a very spontaneous way, and we just have a good feeling and there is no reason for that feeling, but we go for that feeling and let others 
reveal the potential in us that we may not see ourselves, then I have really experienced that during the whole process, then true magic is happening. And so this coming from individuals, which we all have very important tasks and functions to fulfill, like every single cell. But then when we are a whole cell, we will really need others in order to create a bigger picture, a bigger whole, a bigger magic. Yeah. And how did you allow that? You have to get into that state. You know, the cell at state has to bring it in doesn't it absolutely like how did you how did you learn to bring in that or what was it that took you yeah that that's a good question because i had literally for the last three to five years people uh asking me begging me uh pushing me to to bring out the book or to write about what i was sharing about in my trainings and in my teachings and I really very clearly and very determined you know rejected like no 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 this is nothing for me at all but there was a point especially the title when I saw the title of the book that came with another woman who brought it to me <laughs> and said this is what you need to write about and I mean she could only bring the title and she knew what I was all sharing but she could never write the book, of course. So when I saw the title, it lit a spark, you know, it was like the spark in the machine. And it was like ding, in an instant, I could really see the book unfold. I knew exactly how I could weave in all the different aspects that are really not common to bring them together. It's not a common thread, right? Or combination. Right. Oh, it makes me tingly. <laughs> and also without leaving something aside that is important for me. So this was really when I, um, first of all, I, I got inspired by this woman that I really trusted. And when she came up with some ideas and especially the title and then something, you know, made the a connection. And um, there was just something else. It just left me. There was another thing that was important, but it may come back. <laughs> come back. Around just to make it in terms of accepting, allowing it to happen to that. Yeah. So it was seeing the title in her and yeah. Yes. And then eventually, you know, finding the time, finding really the time, which I have to say without all the slowing down, of this pandemic, I would probably until today not have found the time to sit down and allow this book to come up. So I'm eternally... It's a pandemic, baby. It's a pandemic, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, but that's it, you know, because it is for you and for life, because it is a, on, a, on a global level. You know, we've had to be yin in terms of that slowing down and allowing and accepting. And um, but it is interesting, isn't it? Because even this is our paradox, isn't it? That you find it even. You know, you're a yoga teacher. You're talking about yin, and it's hard to make that slowing down. So there's that, and there's also you know a lot of us can get inspired about a um, a book. But it, it takes some good north, some good yang to make it happen. Yes. And, tr and trusting what comes. I mean, yeah, Bill Plotkin talked about the muse. You know, you have to, <laughs> the muse has to come. Yes. No, absolutely. I mean, um, I would say, you know, the, the actual process of writing a book is, first of all, very little spectacular or glamorous. <laughs> just, uh, it's bottom on the seat and start writing absolutely you just have to do you have to create the space and time and then you just have to put your button down and whether there is one sentence coming up after these six hours or a whole paragraph or if you're lucky a whole chapter 
you just have to keep doing it. And um, this is something that uh, I appreciated a lot that these Yang aspects in me were so well developed. You know, I came from a Swiss background, Swiss German background, and I mean, my life um, requested a lot of discipline and focus from me that I could do what I wanted to do and guarantee the survival of myself and my two children that I was responsible for on my own. So in this moment, I really said like, thank you to these yang aspects within the yin environment that allowed me to finally stop running and just see what's coming out when I sit down and write. And what, you know, I will go into the, 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 some of the chapters um, or particular sections, but what did you learn about yourself doing it? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, first of all, I really realized how destructive my inner chatting is. So would I have surrendered to this inner chatting? Like, look at you. Who do you think you are? Didn't I tell you? Didn't they tell you you will never be worth anything? Yeah or nobody's going to read it. Oh, what a rubbish. If I had surrendered to that, you know, this book would never have come out, of course. So realizing that despite all the work that I have been doing already for all these years, that, you know, the tendency to fall back into this trap is still so strong, was quite a shock. And also really an invitation for me that I saw that writing the book was another round of healing for mm. myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. Actually, it reminds me of in terms of your Swiss, uh, Carl Jung's wife. Um, she talks about where she first in terms of the, you know, the inner, inner critic and like you're yeah, writing a book and, you know, like it's not going to be good enough. Who are you? Who are you? And she just turned to it going, you know, today you may be right, but I'm going to give it a go anyway, you know, like just, but it's tenacious. I mean, you know, all, yeah, all your work, all what you know, all what you've learned, that inner critic, that little voice from, you know, from the past, doesn't it? It's it's absolutely. tenacious. It's tenacious. It, um, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but then the second thing that I learned was like I said, oh wow. <laughs> actually a lot this is actually all the things you know that you have or that you know already, that you have put your energy in, your time that I have been sharing. And I saw like, this is quite diverse. This is quite, you know, and I kept, I really keep it. Yeah. In a very light, digestible, still profound way. Mm. But so I, I also got this um, opportunity to see, you know, like looking back and say where I come from and honor this moment to sit down and, and, and make a pause and put it down so it doesn't get lost and actually realize what I, I all have been, um, you know, yeah, put my studies in and gathered and understand. No, really? I know there is a lot to go with still, which is which yeah. is my nature also. Yeah, it's you're a curious soul. You've in terms of that journey, but that's what it feels like in terms of real honoring, you know, an honoring of your story, an honoring honoring of, um, yeah, your your mentors, your people, your your life, your experiences, and just um, and. You know, there's so many beautiful parts and your daughter's poetry and your friend's poetry and and also this, you know, yeah, telling yeah, telling your story and either I don't know, putting some things to rest or there actually this is what I wanted to say before that got lost. I I had a very clear outline because I, I have a very structured mind. So I, I did that's when I work best and I can, you know, improvise and add and really create, but I need a structured foundation. So the content of the different chapters were quite clear. But what I did not expect and not plan were these personal stories popping up in the specific 
areas. So this was quite something that surprised me. Each time they came and said, oh, what are you doing here? So this is something that I, I also learned that um, when we just, you know, do it and let go a little bit of the expectations and the clear structures, that then a lot of good and better things even can come in yeah. that we couldn't even plan. Yeah. Yeah. And wanted to be heard. Like, it sounds like, you know, and were there times when it popped up and you go, no, you're not going to be part of it? Or it's going to go, hello, well, you've obviously, you know, you want to be yeah. part of it too. Or was yeah. there any? I mean, I obviously had to decide also how deep I wanted to go in, into my personal story, also in regards of the people involved. So there, I, I, there were some moments when I wrote down more details, experiences, but then I clearly found this was not the space for them there. Maybe, maybe in another book. Yeah. But be, uh, because I, I still wanted to keep the focus on the material, on the knowledge and the skills mm. and the, the, the diversity of um, methods mm. and also tools, that I wish so much that they reach and touch women in one way or also another. Yeah. So that's why I decided yeah. at the end. Yeah. But this for me, because I, um, re, you know, like for me, I loved that. I loved the sort of, it felt like a tapas, you know, like a delicious tapas because it has the rigor and the knowledge and the science, you know, there's real depth behind it. And then this digestibility and just sort of, and also this curiosity, you go, oh, I want to go down that route. Um, because right since I've read your book, I've been doing yin, yin yoga. Like I used to do, I had it a Gaia, Gaia yin or whatever, um, but like holding positions like for 30 minutes. Yeah. Honestly, it's like a, it's been so beautiful, you know, so therefore, like, it's just so automatic. You just, you do. I mean, actually, do you know what? I had to go and get it from a friend because I, and, and when I finished it, my friend said, can I please have it? Because I was just like, <laughs> and, then, so I, and then I had to go and get it today off the hill um, because I wanted it right here with me. So it's sort of like, it's, you know, um, can we just, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously no spoilers, but there's there's something you know like so my point I guess was what I was trying to say is there's this beautiful you know the knowledge and the tools but the personal story is so beautiful because I'm I'm sort of tired of reading non-fiction books that don't give a personal story I want to know the person's pain that got them to their yeah. journey you know I because I don't think we or you know or the insight or or the inspiration because Otherwise, yeah. it's, it feels sort of either one dimensional or something, because yeah. I don't think we talk about our stories enough. You know, we don't give them air and we don't let things then lay to rest a wee bit. Yeah. And there's some, and there's some things we want to keep sacred. It's not for a podcast. It's not for a conversation. It doesn't even have to be said. You know, I'm really curious. Absolutely. About that. Mm. Yeah, I just, um, I just have learned also, especially in my, in my teachings you know when i'm holding like big groups between 20 and 45 people for s several days and and especially going into the vulnerability of the invisible which means emotions thoughts the healing path stillness um yin yoga yeah meridians chi all the things that um that need some or that represent the vulnerable part of ours when we go there it's so much easier when we have somebody who guides us who opens up herself mm -hmm. because if i invite my listeners or students or participants to to go there and i keep just my business face and selling face it doesn't work and, and it, it, it um, is a clear and direct example and invitation. Oh, this is what she means. Or, oh, this was really intimate. And even if the other person decides not to do it, mm -hmm. but to see it's possible without breaking apart. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah. This, this healing part has a lot, it is our personal path. Mm. I had, you know, I was really a little bit shy with this personal part, the first round, you know, there are different rounds when, <laughs> when you write a book. So the first round, the raw, the very raw round after being edited also from my wonderful friend, Anouk uh, Maketi, mm -hmm. who is also one of the poets. Oh, it's, yeah, I love her work. And then I gave it also to two other people, Susanne Hegele, because she knows also a lot of the, the content about the hormones and everything. So I wanted her to read through it. And another dear friend also living here on the island, Anaska Fisher. She, is, she has written already quite a few books in Spanish, like um, the El Talisman or El Leader. Oh, oh, Susan. Yeah, she showed, yeah. Me, showed me that. Yeah. yeah. So I gave it to her and she was actually the one who afterwards um, gave me like an hour, an hour and a half of, after asking me if I would ready, if I would be interested to learn more so the book could even get to, to another stage. Mm. And I said, of course. <laughs> and she, she encouraged me. She said, I want to hear more about this personal part. You know, it's, you, you show it sometimes, but I, I want to hear more. And I'm sure those who are reading this book want to re read more. So then I went into second round and saw and felt where more was possible and coming up. So again, I needed another person, yeah. another woman who stimulated me to, no, 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 this is the right path, but give me more. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It is that person that sort of, yeah, the little, the encouragement and the guide and just even in terms of, yeah, the people that hold the space, the people that encourage us and, and um, you make it real. I will, um, um, so uh, I suppose, you know, like if I, turn, I just turn to this page, but, and I do love this. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. My vision of myself as a woman was always a wild, free and confident one. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture. Also yeah. from a woman here from the island. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's an extraordinary. So she was um, just, I mean, a bit of a taste, like she was, you had that and there was a part of like coming back to her so at a point you felt that she was lost yes and absolutely yeah. it was like in my late 20s beginning of the like turning 30 mm. i i had already my two precious children like six and four and i realized that i had completely lost her that i was totally tamed by society and expectation of the high society where I was used to move around. And um, I realized it, of course, not intellectually, I realized it because I, I fell deeply, I got deeply unhappy and um, even sick, like really sick in a, in a way um, towards depression, which I didn't uh, re realize as a depression and it didn't show itself as a depression because I didn't retreat into like I can't do anything I did the opposite I, I, did, I <laughs> like frantic yeah, good yank. To getting some snippets of happiness in all different ways and not all of them were really morally okay and I just realized if I do not stop that and if I do not go back and look for this uh, to um, make the search for this soul uh, search mm -hmm. searching my soul and what I really wanted and who I really was then it would really be too late and I would get seriously sick and this is when I had to take a lot of um, or like important decisions like um, also Bill um, is explaining so well when you stand actually on um, the ground looking down to the canyon right yeah. and you see where you are jumping to and you have again the moment you can you can take a step back you can change your mind but just looking back and knowing that there was no alternative ba uh, back there made me jump mm. into this void 
with all the fear that, that comes with it, especially when you do it the first time in your life. And, um, but, but I knew there was no back, there was nothing else, there was everything that I had behind me, there was no, no possibility, no chance for me to go and find myself and look for actual happiness and be an example for my children what happiness means. Yeah. And that's such a leap of faith, though, I mean, in terms of um, still, you know, there's not felt like nothing back, but you've still got your children and, you know, and so to to go into that canyon and the bravery of that um, yeah. is, is phenomenal. I felt, you know, like like many say often, no, I didn't do it because of my children. Uh, you know, I didn't leave my husband or a life or didn't quit a job or didn't leave a country because of my children. For me, it was exactly the opposite. I, I realized I had to do it for my children because of them. Because how could I ever uh, wake up another day educating them or wanting them to lead into their happiness when I didn't know how to be happy myself? Mm -hmm. So they were my push. Yeah, yeah. But there's such integrity, such authenticity, you know? Like I want to be that role model. I want to be that mm -hmm. person that I know I am um, mm. uh, for my children, really amazing. And even, you know, um, in terms of the morally wrong is even, even that is part of the gold, isn't it? Because yeah. that's the, it could be the dark side of the wild, but anything, you know, you'll do our, our bodies in a way, or we'll do anything to, to, to feel that aliveness, to feel that, even if it, you know, yeah. uh, it's at some level, it's morally wrong. I mean, it's, I think you sort of young men who, I don't know, drink, rob, or, you know, I'm saying young men, but you know, like it's, or drive around madly in cars or something like that, or it's, it's like a, a, a rite of passage. They want to feel that aliveness, you know, yeah. don't they? Yeah, um, I think aliveness, feeling alive is a very important uh, expression that you bring up here. I was literally dead. I, was, I, I, I just felt I didn't exist anymore. And I think once we realize it, when, once we are lucky enough to realize that, and then it's really like this survival, this and, uh, you know, it may be gracious or not, but I think it's important that it is happening. And then eventually we find our way where we can feel or get the feeling of aliveness with more uh, consciousness, clear, wise decisions. And uh, but at the beginning, it's just do it. You just have to do it no matter what and how. And I think even did even Bill say that sometimes you just got to just got to keep going and then the path finds itself or you know what is that there's a quote about that I want I don't know what some sort of poem I, I, I want to say that sometimes you just you don't not you just don't know the path you just have to take that one step and it, the path will reveal itself yes absolutely yeah, yeah. and I am I mean just this you know once again no spoilers but um what are you know, like the different chapters in this tarpas you know and um like anatomy like and I'm just sort of, I was just sort of struck by, you know, working on a, on um, basically a corpse, you know, yes. to really understand. Yes. I love, I mean, that's just, <laughs> wow, that's really connecting. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, when I came here to the island, Mallorca in 2004, I, I was a simple massage therapist, uh, Pilates instructor and yoga teacher. And after a while, I really realized um, that I needed to know more about the body and the connections with everything we do in order to help my clients more and also in order to help myself more. And I was looking in different directions and there were wonderful, beautiful, spiritual, more spiritually influenced uh, directions I could have chosen. And I wanted to go there, but my my... I'm a Taurus, I'm Swiss, I'm very <laughs> earthy, I have a lot of kapha also. So I, I, need, I knew I needed to find something first scientific with a foundation. And so I really went into this four year of osteopathy studies where, you know, you really had to study a lot of many things I didn't understand until the day of today when you yeah. go to yeah. cellular level and chemical processes, whatever. 
but I really knew I, I, I needed to know that. And then from there, then years later, I went into Chinese medicine and all the holistic approaches. But actually, the, the, the longing to eventually sign up for one of these uh, di dissection courses was born in the osteopathy course because we got trained in anatomy Monday morning without breakfast, 7 o'clock, uh, watching videos of this English guy who was one of the first ones who was explaining anatomy based on freshly dissected corpse. It was video, eh? it was not live. <laughs> but this alone was like, oh my God, I can never do that. But it made me curious. And so when I found Gil Hadley, who then offers these amazing journeys um, to dissect uh, human corpse under his amazingly philosophic human priest-like guidance, so those 10 days back then in Scotland, in um, Edinburgh, was it? Uh, St. Andrew, St. Andrew, changed my life. It really changed my life. At a cellular level, you know, like, yeah, just at many levels, I would imagine. Mostly, I think the main thing was that anything that has to do with nature and that we try to understand and study and we have all the books, nice uh, designs and clear explanations. It's just beyond our capacity to understand and beyond human language to describe it. So everything I had learned up to then, and it was quite a lot, I could put it in the trash bin. And I really didn't know if I could ever go back and teach anatomy or stand in front of people and share something about the human human body because it was so mind blowing. You know, yeah. like yeah, and I love sort of like wanting to know. So you go there and wanting to know more, and then it's sort of like it's where, and this is a bit of a theme of the podcast too. That always it's come up a couple of times where you know science just isn't enough. It's the beyond mystery, like the potential and what we, you know. It's yeah. just so immense. And you and I guess you're literally at the table. It's sort of like I can imagine just sort of the humbleness and the yeah. wonder, you know, and the yeah. sacredness. Absolutely. I mean, it must be, he must be extraordinary to hold that, all that sort of, yeah, just even how you've described him, sort of priest-like and sort of, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but also, you know, the, the scientist. Yeah, it brings also, you know, it really brings together. He, he often said, Gil often said, and I mean, we were four, um, 30, 30 people there. We had um, five forms, we called them forms. So each form had six people that we could work with this form with our uh, scalpels. And we were really taking off layer by layer. And he said it often, and it really was true. This is the work half of an artist and half of a butcher. Yeah. And so you, you see like both is linked, you know, also the way that he guided us through the, the scientific approach together with the spiritual approach, the work of a butcher, uh, going along with the work of an artist and how this duality again yeah. of life, death, yeah. life and death. Yeah. Yeah, and you dance so beautifully with that, you know, and I love the, the, the chapter, you know, on the, um, the organs and the, the Chinese medicine of both. And I'd never seen it presented in that way. And it's oh. just, it was so, it's so beautiful. I'm just flicking through now, you know, and um, yeah, coming home, the hormones, the Western medicine, the Eastern medicine, really beautiful. And, and also like, um, it's, Maybe even you've done it in your book where you've put out the science, you've laid it on the table, and then people, and then you've let people, given that, you go off and decide about how you want to live your life and your diet and your relationships and your connection with nature. Yeah. You know, it's like a very enabling, it's like the little prompt, your little friend, your little your girlfriend is giving you a little prompt. That's mm. what I love. It seems really adult. And I felt also going, oh, I want to know more. What do I have to do then? But, yeah. 
but I noticed it was just that adult wisdom. You know, you're inviting people to tap into their own wisdom with a little bit more information, a little bit more curiosity and self-inquiry through your questioning. Mm -hmm. This, you know, this, this makes me really, really happy. It makes me even cry. <laughs> but hearing you saying this, this is the whole intention of the book and also of my teaching or sharing. It's, um, I, I, I'm a true believer, and I think this is really something also in common with Bill Plotkin, that we all know. We, we are all perfect as we come. We, we know we don't need gurus, we don't need therapists, we don't need... <laughs> You know, not to tell us what is the right path, to help us walk the path, yes. But, but by knowing more, and that's why I really wanted to have this book so widely spread. Sometimes people told me you have to, you know, concentrate more on one, <laughs> one direction. You don't want to go no. together. And yeah. then with this understanding from different perspectives in, in a in a hopefully uh, uh, digestible way that we can understand it, then, then I and each one of us, every cell, we can figure out what resonates with yeah. me, what feels good for me now. And it can be, this can change in a week, in a year, in 10 yeah. years. And feeling the right, you know, that is freedom and responsibility to make our own choices yes. so this is my whole main intention yeah. behind yeah. It's, yeah. it exudes oh. it I, and this freedom and responsibility is lovely and i and also you're saying like women of all ages like you know what's right now what and you know i mean there's a you know 20 year old is going to be different from you know yes you know absolutely um, and then also depending yeah. what archetype you are. Or well, what let me right I now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to go already there. Well, I just want you to just yeah, because once again, it's um buy the book and but um look at look, oh my goodness, isn't that yeah, just glorious? these illustrations come from the same woman who has inspired me to write the book, Marike van der Graaf. Oh. Yeah, she is the artist. Oh. So tell me, just you just touch on the feminine archetypes because I think it, it really echoes about bringing all parts of ourselves. You know, we're we're a tapas, we're a, you know, and a complete dish. You know, like a, but um, I'm mixing my metaphors. But um, just tell us about the feminine archetypes and why they're there. Yeah. Well, when when I discovered them, I was already in in my forties. And, uh, you know, I, I had spent 40 years or let's say between 30 and 40 these years of um, finding another or, or let's say finding back to an aspect that had be, that I had been neglecting so long in my 20s, all in order to fit in, all in order to be loved or to do the appropriate thing which then led me to emptiness and unhappiness, whatever in my case. And so I was very curious. So I had to find another identity, of course, and, and also again um, adapting, you know, because I moved then to Spain with my two kids on, on, on my hands and we built up another existence, a new life here. So definitely I was living another part of myself and was neglecting again other parts because then I thought, well, but this is now who I am and I do not want the others anymore. So I eventually realized that um, something was missing. Yeah, again, I have again to refer to Bill uh, Plotkin with this right. wildness when he, you know, I'm often talking about wild, wise woman and that he describes wild as wholeness. Mm. So this inspiring, I was on, on the search for discovering all the aspects that I could be. And, and, and I have a very strong character. I can be very angry. And, and I love my anger because it has brought me mm. through many important transformations. Mm. It has also burned a lot of bridges, of course. <laughs> But, but the, the ability to destroy, I, I see the quality in it as well, like in many other aspects. And so when I went into the search of the archetypes and I just found these this classical ones that I, I was really frustrated, like 
I didn't feel represented by any of them only, yeah, that you have to choose yeah. your mother or spouse or the innocent girl or who. Mm. And so by discovering Jean Boland's work in her book, Goddesses in Every Woman, which, I, which was a, a gift from another dear friend, a Spanish friend here from the island, uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and to discover more possibilities mm. in the form of these seven Greek uh, goddesses, just opened a whole new dimension into this wilderness, into this wholeness that I could make my change, my choices in every moment. Yeah. You know, and I do not need to cut one off. I can be them all once I know about them and I can invite them and say, okay, now I need Athena because yeah. I really need to go forward and be focused and active. Yeah. Now I'm more Hestia because I really can't see anybody. I need to retreat and I'm enjoying solitude. So. Oh, glorious. And how do you, yeah, because the, um, the lovely offerings and I just, I'll just turn to it in terms of, yeah, if you need to, if you have a tendency, you know, you need to balance one up or you need to, you know, balance it out and also to activate it. So I love, you know, your body, mind and emotions, yeah. which is, you know, human nature, they're the essence and you've got lovely suggestions there. <laughs> and then, um, you know, your beautiful, um, uh, bit on spirituality and once again your ex exploration in, into that and um and then you've got um i do actually really like the four stages i very um, end mm -hmm. yeah ray hillis talked about um he was quoting somebody else but the first he was saying like the first half of their life is building a home and the second one second half of life is building a tomb but anyway, you've got a few more. You've got the students up to 25 years and then the householder years, then the hermitage. I'm into the hermitage. And then the fourth stage, renunciation. But just the... They are, you know, there are different ways, no, to divide our life in different stages. Many, many different um, ways. If, if you divide it in, in the seven years or nine years or... Uh, adolescence and maturity there are so so many different ways to look at that I just like to look at that from this Ayurvedic uh, perspective um, because it 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 makes sense especially for women because you know I I have written this book because I absolutely see the potential for healing and to make shifts and turn turn the table i totally see this in us women mm. there are amazing men around to support us or who have a lot of the feminine aspects and i i just see it in women themselves that just through our body structure mm. and how we are built anatomically that we just have to surrender every month to a little death yeah, and rebuilding and um, or giving birth, you know, not only to children, but also to projects um, with, combined with this amazing sens uh, sensitivity for others needs or for frequencies that are not linked with logic. Mm -hmm. So, I, I just find we need so much support that we can use this potential and that we do not get sucked out by others because we are so trained in giving it out and adapting to others and pleasing others and supporting others but hiding ourselves. And so as I have seen myself running or living these stages, going through these stages unaware of that they exist, and seeing myself how much energy, wisdom, intuition I just burned or ignored. And um, also the painful processes that can come with aging, which when we understand that we are just in a different stage, yeah. where the body has different processes and provides us with different skills than when we are 20, that it's not a sign of weakness, it's just an invitation 
to focus on other aspects of our being and then it becomes so beautiful yeah. and so empowering isn't it and and empowering mm -hmm. yes and empowering oh that's so lovely that's so lovely and when um in terms of your your how do you nurture like there's in terms of you know you've got a lovely woman network around you and but do you cultivate that in terms of circle work or is it more sort of either fluid and people coming in and out or in yeah, terms, yeah. or i mean you're you're leading people you're in terms of your your groups anyway mm -hmm. but are you yeah, yeah. I have been leading women's circle twice, once for with two other women for two years and once for uh, with another woman for three and a half years until a year and a half ago. And uh, I find it interesting and I really loved it bringing people, women together. Um, and I also am a big fan of um, periodic work. So I'm not good in just doing it endlessly. I really like to start something and when I feel either, you know, the engagement is no commitment is not there anymore because, you know, some women get children or are in careers or, you know, they can, they, it changes a lot. Mm -hmm. So when I feel then that the engagement is not there anymore or we have lost the goal that I set it up or we as a circle have moved and I'm very happy to you know, to also end it again. Yeah. And also myself, I, I'm a quite lonely wolf, I have to say. I'm a woman who, who does not really well in um, having weekly commitments or belonging yeah. to one tribe only. Yeah, you do want wild and free. Oh, I, I do not do well with it. Yeah. I just don't yeah. do well. You know, it doesn't go with me, which yeah. of course sometimes come with this, oh, I would like to belong, but I know my nature, I know I belong to myself and I belong to many different groups yeah. without having to adapt deeply and too much into each one of these groups. Yeah, well, it might trigger that sort of structure, you know, where you're wanting to get away from that. It could be, you know, like that confinement. Um, do you want to share, and I know, you know, you're, you're in a beautiful marriage of con with a conscious man and do you want to share because that's I think that's also interesting about like where we find ourselves you know we go back to our true self and and how do we have the relationship we you know that really matches where you both are because you I you know I don't know you well and um but this sort of sense of you know where two people are wanting are developing together I think that's yeah. really special yeah yeah. yeah, it is very special. I mean, David and I, we are now together for 13 years. And when we met, I just turned 40. And I just had this, uh, finally, you know, four years without relationship and healing and cleaning and, you know, really building up the relationship to myself, which was so empowering and necessary. That, of course, he came into my life in a moment when I had it very clear, no man anymore in my <laughs> life. <laughs> so when I met him, uh, as I had, I, I had experienced deep love before, and so I recognized this connection again. And we really came from two complete different planets. You know, I was the single mom with a, with my own business, quite structured and, you know, responsible for two kids and having built up my life here. And David was the traveling, home-free yoga teacher, you know, star musician, a lot of women around him, you know, no commitments, nothing. <laughs> and so we met and we always had, we come both with two or, or had had we signed up for one of these platforms with our, our wishing list, we would never have met. <laughs> never. Met. never. <laughs> so this is very important to know that at the beginning, and I talk about the first three years, we were really, it seemed so much more that we were not made for each other. If it hadn't been for this strong connection that I call love. So just 
I, I realized in that moment also that I, through my work and my story and my different relationships that I had been and ha had lost myself and refound myself, that in that moment I was called to step into the place of showing up and revealing what I saw and felt because he was not in this place. He was very confused. And so just doing the first step, which I never had before, it was always the man that, I, that ca uh, came and then I just, okay, the man comes, he will know. And here I knew, oh, now if I really want to know if this is a man that fits into my life or that I can grow with him, him together, I need to make the first steps and then see what comes back. And so it was really three years, it was very, very tricky, very hard work, very, a lot of pain, a lot of breakups, but a lot of very authentic standing up for myself and he stood up for himself. But I, I dare to say, and, and, and I, I know David um, sees this also and would, would back me up, because I was the woman I was with 40, with the story that I had behind me. I was this and had this emotional maturity or the knowledge who I was, what I needed to be happy. I took really the lead in the emotional growth of the, of the two of us. And he was willing to go with me, to step into it. Because I, I could see back then, this was not the most comfortable path for him. It only was possible because he too had a yearning and longing for, for some growth and something deeper. Mm. And, and I see this and I've seen it often in men. They, they, they are wonderful men around now um, and many who would never bother, you know, to, to go such a challenging path, you know, and so they choose their uh, mates also in respectively. But there are a lot of men wanting this path too. And I just dare to say it needs the woman by them, their side with the emotional capacity and maturity who can pass the way because there are some abilities that are very not that I haven't seen present in men so far, but they can be uncovered with the um, either by the right woman by their side or in their lives or practices or whatever. And, and then those who want and are ready to and looking for that, and there are so many men that are here, they, they step onto it. Mm. So this is uh, what, what my task responsibility was there and I did it and it was very scary. But again, like when I was standing in front of the Grand Canyon and uh, I saw what happened with all my other relationships where I did not take this responsibility and I didn't have the skills yet. So I said, okay, I mean, there is a man that I feel this connection again, although I, we share so few things together. <laughs> and then we, we embarked on this way and um, I'm, I'm, I'm so... There is not one day where not one of us would mention, I love you so much. Thank God yeah. we met each other wow. and we recognized each other. Yeah. And the universe is, ha is happy for that. You know, like you're, it's, <laughs> it's sort of you're thanking, but also I think the universe can thank you, you know, to ha have that commitment because the world needs these relationships. Yeah these yeah, conscious that's true. people that's that, true. and and that we can they 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 um the path that it's possible i think it's you know you through you know we heal through relationship and so therefore you know it is a yeah i've there's a few people been on the podcast who talk about they want their relationship to be you know a gift to the world yeah and so not only is your own path you know mm -hmm. and your own work but it is your relationship that I think, you know, that brings even more to you. And I, and I suppose I'm going back to Bill Plotkin about like where you've, you know, you've gone down the canyon, you know, you've done your work, you, you've got your gifts, you know, your purpose, you've got your relationship, but 
it's also how you're saying like the world wants more from you. It's not sitting back on your laurels. It's yeah. like the world, you're being so courageous. You are that wild woman. The world's going to be asking more of you. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? <laughs> um, I totally feel that and have been feeling this while writing writing the book like not not so much while writing it but when the moment came and publish it mm. so I was really horrified I really I was really horrified because I understood that putting this book out in the world would you know I, I it it was out of my control what would happen then. Yeah. And it's also like, again, like with other work I did before, showing myself and say, look, this is me. <laughs> Do what you want or you may like me, you may not like me, you, you may really find pleasure in it, you may hate what I'm writing about. This is me. So, so I give kind of the target for, it's, it's very a vulnerable place, mm. but I also felt, even if I didn't have this urge or that the urge, the longing didn't come from myself, I felt it was right and it was aligned with mm. what the world asks from mm. me or why I'm here to share it on a, on a bigger, bigger uh, global level. Mm. Yeah. And now the German translation is coming out, isn't it? Yes, actually, Susanne has finished yeah. it in one month straight. Now it sits with me because, well, yeah. of course, now I, I need to go through to make it my language. Yeah. So Susanne was the one who, thank God, as a professional translator, yeah. she, she did this work. And I can now just go through, you know, and um, adjust a little bit because I also know where I can change the meaning of sentences, mm. where, where not, where I can leave something away which she could never do. This is just the author yeah. who can do it. So, yeah. so it, it sits with me. I'm with the, I have, uh, I'm at the Hormans right now. And I just uh, organized it the same way as the whole book unfolded, whether it was for my own work or with whoever I was working with and waiting for the work. It was the commitment that it never ever should cause any stress should always be a joy whenever I sit to it. So, of course, it's on my list, in my agenda, and then life kicks in. So yeah. allow, I allow that. But it's definitely happening, and very soon. I mean, at, by the end of May, for sure, it will be on the market. Oh, wow. Good luck, mate. Travel well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so, too. Oh, lovely. Um, I've got a question, I guess, because of Mallorca, you know, and um, we love it so, and you've been here since 2004 and very integrated and part of the community. And, and I guess, what have you got any, like, what are your, your hopes or it's, it's sort of, it's off, not off, off track with Earth Reverse podcast, but I'm sort of, I am really interested. Yeah. Like, I think there's, an, and I actually want to start interviewing more people in Mallorca because I love this island. There's so much going on at a really beautiful, you know, a conscious, healing, regenerative level. And I just, I don't know, it's an extraordinary place. Have you got any thoughts about where? Yeah. Yeah. About yeah, it? definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's still surprising how, how this odd reputation, you know, from the party island and Palaman and Magaluf, um, is still very dominant in many people's head. I still know quite a bit of people who say, say I have never been on Mallorca because of this, you know, there's all Ballermann and uh, all this party uh, going on, party scene. And this is going on for true. But what I have been seeing in these um, 17 years is really that um, the island itself is so precious, it's so diverse, and so that's, that's why also diverse, wild, and whole yeah. in herself. Yeah, yeah. Right? With, yeah. with, with all energies, the, the mountain, yeah. the earth, the lightness, the beautiness, mm. the dulzura, which, which is sweet, and the internationality, culture, the city. But then especially I feel, and I think we have been talking about this when we first met, 
is that in the last six to eight years, the, the island has attracted so many conscious people who made a conscious choice. Mallorca is the place to come and bring in our wisdom, our knowledge, our skills, all in the sense of sustainability, environmental consciousness, rewildering, regenerating, um, consu uh, minima minimalizing the trash, right? Reusing uh, the carbon and everything. So it's incredible. And I, my hope is, and I, I have seen her kicking out those who do not belong to the island, yeah. <laughs> and opening her arms to those who do belong to the island. So I <laughs> have a big vision and a hope and, and total faith that this island is um, gathering the, and is having already the people who live here for many, many years or just came recently, that uh, we are taking care of her and we will somehow, you know, use her resources and um, work with the tourism that is life uh, giving also, as we have been seeing now in the last uh, 14 months when it was missing, um, finding a way how to work with tourism and how to bring the quality in that we we want or that the island needs in order to survive. Mm. Lovely. Oh, yes. Yes. See, <laughs> see. Yeah. Actually, I love the word, um, what is it? Hospitality Cam comes from hospice and yeah. healing, which is interesting, isn't it? Like, I yeah. think, yeah. How can we reframe that tourism hospitality, you know, industry? Yeah. yeah. Oh, darling. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share? Anything you want to feel that's coming through you? You know, when you asked me first, no, to if I would be willing to have a podcast with you, to have a conversation with you, and I was looking at uh, at your your podcast and where you come from and where you look from which perspective, which lens you look at life, right? And I I was looking for the um, connection, no, with from from my side because I am not the 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 country girl or the girl or the woman that has a lot of pleasure of just being in nature, wild, mm -hmm. digging in the earth, and you know, no comfort. I or knows a lot about permaculture and all all these uh, things. So this, there are for sure many, many other people like you who know much more, who are much more conscious. But I come from another perspective where this wisdom of Mother Earth and of nature, where I, I wish so much that we find our way back to her within ourselves and that we really open up to all of the aspects that nature offers us and which we are made of. That we do not limit ourselves to just one way of living, one way of thinking, one way of dressing. That we really realize that we are nature, that we are part of her. And when we look outside and we just look the current, you know, from in the morning when the sun rises, throughout the day when she leaves again, or through a year with the seasons, or throughout the lifetime of a human being or of an animal or plant, that we, we, we just reconnect, reconnect to that and, and just take and, and see the guidance that's, that's here, that's all around us. If we just allow our yang and the mind focused qualities to step back a little bit and drop in you know, in our earth nature and our heart wisdom so that then they can you know dance with each other you know mind and heart and moving forward being still creating new things destroying coming to new life or dying 
So this is where I feel the strong connection between what you are doing and looking for and offering and uh, what I'm doing from a, from a different perspective. Oh, and that is so beautifully said. And that's exactly why I wanted you on here. You know, this is such a beautiful message. Such Thank a beautiful you. message, you know, like, and it's honoring, you know, it's honoring our, our true nature and all mm. the, the, the unlimited potential. And yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. And for sure, we'll go up to do some solo togethers. We'll go up the mountains and, and we'll dig around and, and yell. I would definitely... <laughs> I will definitely come with you yeah. with one of your walks and yeah. what you're offering for sure. Yeah, you, you yeah. can. You can come to me. Yeah. Um, but this is, you know, like I do, I, I just, I do think that this is, you know, and it's, I, I don't know, yeah, I mean, yeah, coming, coming back to yourself, coming back to your body, accessing that, you know, and starting start I don't know it's sort of like even you know we're going back to the atoms like going back to that little part inside of us that may have been hurt or hidden or squashed and we to look inside that yeah yeah mm. and I, I just maybe in uh, another other um yeah may, maybe it helps some of us who hear that because you know the you may experience this too the, no matter what we are in how much we know or we understand ultimately we have to face the the challenges of human existence mm. and of this material life right yeah so um, we all go through our waves and uh, have days full of joy and motivation and uh, visions and then sometimes you don't know, even know why we should get out of bed and how we should deal with these 24 hours ahead of us. And um, I, I just feel like when we take one day at a time and really seeing each time when we get up in the morning as the opportunity to, to, to form and create and take it with all the energies that are waiting to be expressed or addressed that we take it in these little small snippets i find it easier to navigate through the roller coaster of impermanence and uh, continuous change i love you know like the sort of the the you know the the yang the action and then the surrender you know and each moment you're making choices that's a really conscious beautiful way to mm. live in that moment, you know, honoring that, mm. that step by step. Yeah. Actually, I'm tempted to ask you, uh, there's a, I mean, because I put yeah. actually little tips, um, I call them earth converse seeds. So I, um, okay. I take them out of the video and then I put them in a new, a, a YouTube playlist. So I'll put, actually put that in because that's a nice little thing, but is there any little, I don't know, uh, anything you want to close with, with like a little, I don't know, a meditation, a ceremony, anything that, a little offering, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just, I don't usually yeah. ask people that, yeah? Yeah. What would you like to do? Let's, let's do a little closure together, yeah. there was a lot of information, yeah, let's do that, let's do that, yeah. Yeah, you lead it, darling, yeah, and then, I'll, and then after that, we'll do a pause and, yeah. Fantastic, thank you so much. <laughs> So let's just find a comfortable position, whether you stand or sit or lie somewhere or you're walking, just becoming aware of our physical body first, the one that relates directly to Mother Earth, we can touch her, we see her, we feel her. She's solid. And let's give this precious body perfect in all her proportions, 
and shapes our full-hearted attention and reverence. Acknowledging that it is beyond our capacity to understand what she is all doing to keep us alive in every moment, to keep us going. And just as gracefully as possible through the different states and stages of our life our body feel the breath flow through her nourishing every single cell by taking the old stuff and toxic substances out of the body and bringing new fresh life and oxygen into the body again with every breath. Let's appreciate the scales of our mind to think and plan and analyze, organize. Let's give thanks to this amazing capacity of a human being. And then turn to your soul. Is your body comfortable and steady? Your breath free and flowing? Your mind calm and structured? Turn towards your soul. Ask her or him to show up to you. listening to what this soul wants to express next. What aspects still need to be discovered and lift so you can feel wild and free and whole What is the language of this soul? Where do I feel her most? How can I recognize her when she desperately tries to communicate with me? So I can participate in her function here in these few years that she's given in this material body to explore, to blossom, to be seen and affect and touch other souls in this life. A few more breaths here, being with our soul that maybe gets a texture of face or feeling. Giving her the place and space that she deserves to be seen and honored, 
so she can cooperate with our mind, with our body and any spiritual guidance that's available to us. The last full inhalation here through the nose and out through gently open lips. That is a beautiful offering to end on. Thank you, Miriam. A wild, wise woman. <laughs> oh, it was just a true honor, and I can't wait to know you more and contribute on this island with you. May your and for life fly. Thank you. And so. So I'll Thank put a pause here. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really enjoyed being with you. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll put a pause here and see you back for the next Earth Reverse podcast. In the meantime, go out and enjoy Earth one conversation at a time. <laughs>